Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review for Married at First Sight season, season 16 episode 5 called It's All About the Journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. All about the journey. For these next 8 weeks slash 3,000 weeks that we gotta be dealing with these 5 couples, all about the journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people, not people, why these producers be making these whack ass titles but let's just roll with it okay so it is day one of the honeymoon everybody is you know getting settled in so i guess married life even though it's only like a couple days in and you got cameras all in your face but you know we're gonna get settled in into the marriage life all that stuff you know shaquille and kirsten they're about to head to jamaica he just finished his uh homework assignment you know he got to do for school so now that it's out of the way, Kirsten's getting a little excited because she's like, okay, now we're about to head on to the honeymoon. We're about to, you know, really get this thing started. Back to Jamaica, we start off with Nicole and Chris. They're having breakfast together on the balcony. You know, they're talking a little bit. Chris is telling us in a confessional that he can see himself falling in love with Nicole, but he's not there yet. Chris, of course... <laughs> We know you're not there yet, okay? Uh, we would be concerned if you was already there yet, like how Nicole was already in love with you from the wedding day before she even walked down the aisle. Chris, we understand. You're not in love yet. It is way too early. It's like literally like two days in. We understand. We move on then to Jasmine and Eris. They're having breakfast on the balcony as well. And, you know, Eris wants to make mention of Jasmine eating a lot of bacon and, you know, just because it's been like three days, they've been together three days straight or whatever. She's been eating bacon for all those three days. So she eats a lot of bacon. First off, so you don't eat meat. So what if she made, well, not made fun of you, but what if she made mention, oh my gosh, you don't eat meat. Like you really don't eat meat. I don't think it would be that big of a deal if you ate meat too, Eris. So Let's just leave it alone. She likes to eat bacon. What's the big whoop? Okay, she already said she eats meat. You don't. So why don't we just let bygones be bygones? Because you're going to bring it up again later in the episode. I don't understand. She wants to eat bacon. Let the girl eat bacon. Okay, her figure still look good. And she eat bacon. She eats all that meat and grease. And I do too. And a lot of other people do too. Okay, you don't eat it. That's fine. That's your that's your prerogative. That's what you want to do. But homegirl, she want to eat her bacon. Why we got to keep making mention that she eating bacon? Let the girl eat her bacon and her pancakes. And that sound like a good combination too. With a little syrup on it too. Let, let, I'm just saying. Let the girl eat the bacon. So other than that, they talking a little bit. They're talking about the relationships and who walked away. So Eris makes mention that, you know, most of his relationship, he's walked away based on his immaturity because any little thing that he sees a flaw in, he's quick to walk away. And he's not the first person that said it on Married at First Sight. He's not the first guy that said it on Married at First Sight. A lot of people are immature. Any flaw they see, they want to walk away knowing good, well, that they're not perfect themselves. So, I mean, at least he had that revelation about himself. But at the same time, is it like, you know what it, what it is about yourself that you have a flaw in. But are we working to fix that, to get better? Maybe this was his way to fix all his wrongdoings in his past relationships by coming on Married at First Sight. But, you know, just based off what's been going on these past couple episodes, it didn't fix nothing. Coming on the show is not going to do nothing for you. Maybe seeing yourself on TV acting a fool maybe might help you in, in the future. But you're already 39, okay? Not saying you a lost cause, Errors. I'm not I'm not saying that, but at the same time, you are who you are, and it's gonna be very hard to change that at your grown age that you are. You about to hit middle age, if not already middle age. I mean, middle age. But you know, some people they they gonna take offense when I say that. But you 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 middle age. You know, is so. Um, I'm not seeing any turn of 180 of your behavior. So, I don't know what really coming on the show is going to do for you, but hopefully you can see yourself on TV and see really like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm really not about being serious, but just being for play, play, talking about sex. But okay, so yeah, other than that, we talk about Jasmine and, you know, she admits that she walks away from relationships as well because, you know, she's not going to tolerate the BS. So, I like that and 
he talks about he's going to be supportive for Jasmine because, you know, he, she's his wife. He's going to be there for her, for the dog, all 18, 11 of them. And the mama, you know, when the mama be having to go do her treatment or whatever she got going on, he's going to be there for her too because the mama already loves him, so he's going to be there for her. So, okay, you could be saying all that, Aries. Okay, for me, actions speak louder than words. So all you saying right now to me is going through one ear and out the other. So I'm like, okay, we're going to see if that really were to happen if push comes to shove. Because right now, all you talking about, it ain't doing nothing for me. Maybe it's doing something for Jasmine. That's your wife. But for me, I'm just like, mm, Jasmine, just be careful. So then we move on to Dominique and McKinley. They have brunch at a restaurant. And Dominique's letting us know this is her first time out of the country. They talk a little bit. Nothing else, nothing really to take from their conversation. Good for you, Dominique. You're traveling on camera, so... I'm not mad at it. You know, your first time out of the country, listen, there's people that's over 30, 40 something who's never been out of the country. So good for you. That's awesome. We then move on to Kirsten and Shaquille. They're finally, they finally arrive in Jamaica and I'm looking at them as they're getting settled in and stuff, looking at their resort room, all that stuff. I'm just like, if this was like a real couple, I mean, I know this is a real couple, but you know what I'm trying to say? Like, if they met outside of the cameras and TV show and they really got together to be together and all that stuff, I'm like, they would actually make a really cute couple. So if they do last and it's like a genuine type of love, they will make a phenomenal couple. I feel like, but we know how producers be doing. We, they know we, I mean, we don't like the drama, but they think we do. So they're going to try to do the drama. So it's just kind of like, Hopefully it works out, but other than that, you guys look good next to each other. That's all I'm saying. So they sit down on the patio, they talk, and they toast to each other, the Dill the Dillons. Okay, that's cute. And then we move on to Clint and Gina. I guess they're trying to go to some bar or restaurant or whatever, and they get lost, okay? It looks like the driver don't know where the hell they going. They don't know where the hell they going. It looks like the camera people don't know where the hell they going because they're not giving no direction or any type of inkling or hint of where to go. So the camera people said, we're just going to be filming y'all. We don't know nothing, okay? We, we just as lost as you guys. So, of course, since this is a TV show, we know they they fine. So I'm not even worried about them, okay? So then we move on to back to McKinley and Dominique. They go sailing on a sailboat. And I guess because Dominique's boobs are so big, it's hard for her to put her life vest on. So McKinley is just like, you know, I like that problem. You know, he likes her boobs. He loves her boobs. And I guess as they are sailing, he not really taken too fond of hearing that there might be sharks in the water. You're in the ocean. What else do you really expect, McKinley? But okay, well, all right. I mean, I'm not going to be too fond of sharks either, but I know they're there somewhere, you know, deep down over there. Whatever. But he not really too feeling that too much. So Dominique lets us know in the confessional that he's not really adventurous. And he seems like... He's closed-minded, so hopefully she can get him out of that. But who knows? Because a side note, for this episode, I just feel like each couple, there's one person that's adventurous and there's one person that's reserved. So I'm like, okay, we're doing this opposite thing, this whole, like, why do we keep doing this? Like, why? So I'm like, okay. And it was interesting also, another side note before I go back to what's been going on this episode, is... Everybody was just doing their couple things this episode. And then next week, that's when we're going to finally get everybody together as a group. So I thought that was cool. You know, let people have their own little journey. We don't got to have everything as a group. So that was interesting. Do I like it? Do I not like it? It doesn't really matter. Because no, either way, it's going to be drama some way, somehow. So, okay. So anywho, we move back on to Shaquille and Kirsten. They go ATV riding and you know Kirsten's the one that's more adventurous and Shaquille's the one that's more reserved and so of course he got PTSD from his past trauma and the car accident so he's not really feeling the ATV too much it's not really on his first list of things to do in Jamaica I guess so you got Kirsten she's zooming through she don't care you know she done this she been there done that you know she true to this she not new to this but then you got Shaquille who kind of just driving slow he's like I don't know if I'm going this way that way but then I guess to impress his wife at the end of the activity, that's when he want to do a little vroom vroom. But Kirsten was already at the finish line, just like, okay. You know, I appreciate you, you know, putting in that effort in the last five seconds. But, like, I've, I've been waiting here for, like, 15 minutes. So, like, I don't know what you want me to do. But then they... 
But they go to the, they go to talk, you know, of course, after, after every activity, they got to sit down and talk. And Shaquille is telling us in a confessional that he hopes, you know, eventually that Kirsten could bring him out his shell. And Kirsten agrees that she's going to have to bring him out his shell because she can see that he's not as adventurous as her. Because that's the whole, that should have really been the title of this episode, to be adventurous or not to be. We then move on to Clint and Gina. They talk on a bus as they're still trying to figure out where the hell they're going. Then we move on to Jasmine and Eris. They go snorkeling. And then after they snorkel, they stand up to talk. And, you know, Jasmine liking the way he's looking without his shirt on. You know, they even kiss under the water when they were snorkeling. And they talk about love. So, oh, no, we don't get to there yet. I'm so sorry. Because they kept going back from couple to couple. Okay, they don't get there yet. Okay, we'll talk about that in two two minutes from now. But I guess while they're doing their activity, Eris is talking about, oh, he could see the marriage lasting 30, 40 years. I'm just like, I see what you're trying to say, Eris. But can we say, like, you know, I see this lasting a lifetime? Because 30, 40 years, y'all could still be alive. Then what? You know, I'm just saying on a technical term, you know, I, I understand what you're trying to say. You know, he could see this lasting. But, I mean, 30, 40 years... Y'all gonna be like, what? Well, for him, he gonna be in his 80s. So, that there's there's that. But, I'm just saying, you know, on the technicality, okay, you should know by now. If you've been watching me for a little bit, you should know by now. I'm just gonna, okay, just, for, okay, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on. I, I, I see where this is going right now. I can see, you're, okay, I'm gonna move on. So, we get to Clint and Gina. They finally get to wherever the heck they was trying to go to, hiking or something. So, they're gonna go hiking. And they get to this river, lake, and they go to stand in the lake to talk. They don't sit down or try to swim in the lake. They literally go to the lake, river, lake, river, river, lake, to stand, okay? The water doesn't even reach their waist. They just literally stand and talk. So, they're talking about each other's lives, getting to know each other. Gina lets us know that she don't drink or go out like that, but hopes that Clint can bring her out of her shell, her comfort zone. So he agrees. He's liking where this is going. Seems like she is too. So they kiss. So okay, that's all to take from their, from them in this scene. Then we move on to Nicole and Chris. They go rum tasting. They taste rum from 40% alcohol to like 63% alcohol. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is just something to get y'all drunk. Excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at it. Listen, y'all want to go rum tasting, go ahead, you know. It just wouldn't be my forte just because I'm not a drinker like that. But, you know, for those who are, that's a perfect activity for you guys. Because for me, I'm just like, it looks nice, but I know it ain't going to taste good. So I'm not. Can you give me like a half of a shot? Then we, uh, okay. But, you know, they're having a grand old time. <laughs> and after the activity, you know, they're talking as they're kind of loose. And they're talking about each other's temperament. So, Nicole does mention that back in the day, she was selfish and spoiled. But now she's gotten better. But she does still tend to get a little snippy and lose her cool easier than others. So, she asked Chris if he would be okay with that. So, Chris said, well, you know... I'm just not going to let you talk to me any type of way. So he's not going to tolerate it. And he's going to stand up for himself. And Nicole's like, as you should. So she's not mad at it. And now Chris is kind of kind of thinking back in his head like, oh, I don't like the way she she was before. So I don't know if that's going to come out again. He don't say that word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. But at the same time, I'm sure you have a past too, Chris, that you're not letting us know. So only time will tell at this point. We then move on to Kirsten and Shaquille. They go sit down to talk. Shaquille talking about he about to go to the gym, even though they already did, like, rigorous activity. Kirsten was like, you on your own. I'm not finna go with you because we on vacation. I'm doing me. So Shaquille's like, okay, well, you look beautiful. Kirsten was like, I don't hope I don't leave here and I'm, like, 10 more pounds. He's like, either way, you're still going to look beautiful. I'm very attracted to you. I'm still, I still feel the same way I did when I first saw you walking down the aisle. You still give me butterflies. Kirsten's looking at him like, what well, is that how I feel about you? <laughs> She's like, um, you know, I'm warming up to you. You know, I'm getting there. You know, because when I first saw you, I wasn't attracted to you with a bald head and stuff. So, you know, but I'm I'm learning to get there. 
So then he lets us in the conf- he lets us know in the confessional that you know it was kind of awkward hearing her tell him that, but you know she she's learning to love his bald head, and I'm like, okay, you're just you know I understand you gonna try to keep looking at the positive side of things because of the fact that she's so beautiful and you're so enamored by her, but at the same time she can let's see it for what it is, okay? She she maybe because you don't know the scoop yet, you know, but listen. The way she reacted when you tried to kiss her was all we needed to know. And she wants to let us know she's slow to get physical, even though she prefers physical touch over kissing. But, you know, if we want to be technical about it, you know, kissing is a form of physical touch. I just think, me personally, you know. But, you know, for her, she's just taking it slow and it's not him, it's her. And I'm like, Kirsten, yeah, mm-hmm. You're saying all of this because you ain't attracted to homeboy. Because I bet you, I bet you, five dollars only because you know I'm broke. But I bet you, if it was someone that was everything she wanted, she would have kissed him on the wedding day at the ceremony. They might have already done did the do, and they would have been kissing all willing nilly, touching all willing. So she just saying this to you know, to reject them lowly like. To not hurt his feelings more than it probably already is that he's not letting on because, you know, she's so beautiful. So he going to just let it slide. But I'm not believing none. Kirsten saying, OK, you you taking us taking it slow. But at the same time, you, you told your girls and us that if you wasn't feeling him, you was going to give him your cheek. And that's exactly what you did. So we move on then to Gina and Clint. They have dinner in bed and talk about their past relationships. Well, mainly Gina. Nothing else to take from that. For Gina and Clint, I was just like, okay, let's just get to the next scene because I'm not getting nothing from them. And I guess they just was waiting to drop the bomb on us later on in the next scene with them. But we'll get to that in a minute or two. So then we move on to Jasmine and Eris. They're having dinner by the water on the beach. And, you know, Jasmine is feeding her king because he wanted a piece of her food. So he just took the whole bite. And she was like, oh, you just took the whole bite. Yeah, girl, he gonna take the whole bite. Mm-hmm. So he feed up, she feeding him, but he not feeding her. He not giving her a piece of his plate, you know, just as a as a courtesy, you know. He not gonna do that. But they sit down and talk, and the first question Eris has for Jasmine is, "What is your favorite sexual position?" So you know, Jasmine a little bit of a prude, you know. It's okay, Jasmine. We I understand, okay? You know, you're a God fearing woman. I you don't you ain't trying to put your business out like that. I understand, okay. I understand. But, you know, Aries don't understand. So, he go off off the bat, what's your favorite sexual position? You know, I know she was like, well, what? Why are you going to ask me? Jasmine, what you should have done? You should have been like, oh, well, why don't you tell me your favorite sex, sexual position first since you're bringing up the conversation? But we're not going to say that. So, I guess he understood that it was a little too much, but he didn't really understand. And then he follows up with, what's your favorite color? So she's like, oh, my favorite color is lavender. So he's like, well, you know, females whose favorite color is lavender, you know, their favorite sexual position is downward dog. He don't know if that's true or not, but he he read about it. This whole time, Jasmine is doing nervous laughs. And I'm just sitting here like, that's, that's the best you could do, Eric. Like, that's, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing for real. Oh, really? I'm just like, okay, Eric's just going to be a fool this whole season. Literally this whole season. So, after that, Eric lets us know in the confessional that he know his wife got a little demon in her. So, he's going to try to uh, pull the demon side out of her. Why I gotta be a demon though? Like I'm trying to understand. Like why are we using these words? Did you tell her that? I'm trying. Oh, Eris, I'm. I'm really trying to understand your your mindset here, your logic. What are you trying to? What is your end goal here? Hmm? What What's your end goal by by having? I don't understand. Because it don't it don't even end there, guys. It gets worse. It gets worse. Uh, you know, he doesn't tell her his wife that. You know, he's trying to get the demon side out of her. But then he goes on to say, you know, she's giving lady vibes, you know, classy vibes. But, you know, he needs more. He needs her to give more of the whore vibes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he said it. You know, if you didn't watch this episode, I know you probably like, nah, 
he wouldn't say nah he didn't he said it he said it guys and you know she's just giving nervous laughs and i'm just like what we laughing for jasmine why because you know i, I would have been looking at him crazy like excuse me huh so, so you want me to be a whore for you? Are you going to be a whore for me too? Because like I said, you give me the vibe that you want a girl to go down on you, but you're not going to go down on the girl. But if you're not going to go down on me, I'm definitely not going to go down on you. So therefore, you know, I ain't going to be feeding you like you're a king when you're not feeding me like I'm a queen. You're not doing nothing for me like I'm a queen. If I was Jasmine, I would have been like, okay, since I'm feeding you, I'm going to need you to carry me to the bedroom. But is you going to do that or not? Because this, I, I don't understand. The whore vibes? Oh, then you on the wrong show, homie. You on the wrong show. You ain't you ain't supposed to be on Married at First Sight if you want her. To, I guess you want her to be your little whore. But we it's way too early for you to be talking to me like that. But, you know, if Jasmine's going to allow it, I can't say nothing. I already said too much. All she did was nervous laugh. And he talking about he's on demand at her service. But, I, like, are you really? Or are you just saying that for the cameras so you don't look so crazy that, you know, we all already think that you are? Anyway, that, that's Jasmine's husband, not mine. So I'm just going to mind my business, even though I'm watching and reviewing the show. But, uh, Aries, you know, it, your, your little hating ass cousin may be right. You know, not saying that she wasn't right to begin with, but at the same time, she was annoying. So it's just kind of like, I just called her your hating ass cousin. But, uh, yeah, Aries, uh, this is only day three of marriage at the time and uh i'm not understanding why you're on the show i'm really not but we're gonna move on it's day four of marriage and everyone is waking up the only thing i took from it was eris and jasmine i guess jasmine ordered pancakes and bacon and i guess eris was like oh you ordering you about to eat bacon again let the girl eat her bacon for goodness sakes i understand this is like probably the fourth day you've seen her eating bacon so what Okay, we're going to be talking about this every day for the rest of y'all lives about she ordered bacon again. Eris, Eris, listen. Let, let the girl eat her bacon. Okay, let's leave the girl alone. Let her eat her bacon. Let her get the protein in. Okay. Because the way you be talking about sexual stuff is like, I don't know if she can handle you. And... I, she let her get a protein okay we're gonna move on to gina and clint they go sit down and talk and i guess you know they love jamaica so much so they talk about living in jamaica clint's talking about oh you know we could get a second house out here then gina's talking about oh yeah she will get a what she said <laughs> she'll get a second location for her salon I'm like, Gina, let's worry about the first one, your brick and mortar getting up and running first before we think about second location. Gina, I understand you love your job. Okay, I, I get that. I I completely understand. At the same time, okay, I'm not going to be talking about your job every two seconds, okay? Why don't you marry your job? People do stuff like that, okay? That's the thing. That's really a thing, guys. If you marry your job, that's all you love to talk about anyway. That's all you love to do anyway because you don't be going out. You don't, okay, because you just be focused on the job, which is, I understand, you know, you got to stay on top of your business. But at the same time, it's like, we're on vacation for goodness, goodness sake. And you talking about a second location for your job in Jamaica. Anyway, so then I guess their butler, <laughs> the day, I didn't get his name, but he just, you could tell he a drunk because he's just like, oh, how you guys doing? And they was like, oh, good. How are you doing? He's like, sober. Sober. But I'm going to change that later on. You know, I'm going to go make sure I get some alcohol and I'm going to get you guys drunk too with me. We all going to get drunk together. So I'm just like, okay. Listen, we here for good vibes. I ain't mad at it, but I'm just like, you really upset that you sober right now, bro? Oh, I know you do. Okay. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But this scene with Gina and Clint. Okay, let's let's be on a serious note. I don't know what Gina was thinking. I don't know. You know, I'm, I really be trying to understand people's logics. I really do. But for me, Gina, what, why? What was the purpose of this conversation? Because just going straight into it. <laughs> Gina tells Clint 
that she does they you know she doesn't have any physical chemistry with him immediately you can see Clint's demeanor change his facial expression changes understandably so he you know he got a little rejected a little bit so of course I know his ego a little bit hurt you know whose ego wouldn't really be hurt you know you thinking everything going good the vibes are good then you're gonna be here slapped in the face with a person saying oh yeah by the way the physical chemistry is not there between us we four days in, girl. Like, can we just allow ourselves to have a good time and get to know each other and hopefully the attraction can grow? No, she just got to say off the bat, you know, I ain't really attracted to you like that. So, of course, I guess his, you know, defense mechanism, he gonna, you know, come back with the, you know, he feels the same way and that they're just gonna have to see what happens. So, Gina then said, you know, the attraction and stuff could grow over time. And I'm like, okay, we should end it there. First of all, I don't know why you brought it up to begin with in the first place, Gina. But, okay, the fact that you said that, I'm like, okay, we can end it here. But no, 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 no. It continues. Because then after that, she says, oh, no, before, before that, uh, Clint lets us know in the confessional that he's disappointed by uh, her feelings and whatnot. Listen, I get it, Clint, but, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with your wife. But I, I can understand you feeling disappointed. Like I said, it continues. So then Gina goes on to continue saying, you know, she doesn't really vibe with redheads. And unfortunately, he's a redhead. So, you know, th th it is what it is, so to speak. She don't say that word for word, but I'm just paraphrasing. And I'm just like, Gina, why are you saying this? Like, what, what are you trying to gain here by telling him all this? So you're automatically stereotyping him because of the fact that he's a redhead because you don't vibe with redheads. First off, why don't you vibe, vibe with redheads? What it is? What is it about redheads that you don't vibe with? So are we talking about dating wise or in general? Because don't you own a hair salon? You talking about redheads? So what if a redhead comes to to get their hair done? You gonna feel some type of way? Like I don't understand. What's the purpose of this discrimination or whatever? And why you had to tell him that? He, listen, I mean, we're going to find out next week, you know. He he don't like non-skinny women, slender women or whatever. So, I'll talk about that at the end of the episode. But I'm just like, Gina, this was not the time nor the place to be talking about you not attracted to him and whatnot. Like, you just, I, the way the producers set it up, seemed like she just set it out the blue. And it seemed like even though he was trying to move past that, past it, she continued saying it. So, I don't know if he said anything to begin with to trigger her but if i'm just watching based off of the show what the producer showed us gina you in the wrong okay I, listen i don't care what nobody said gina no gina no I, no you gonna just say oh you find him unattractive even though you was telling his friends and stuff that you did find him attractive so you lying you lying okay Gina, I, I I I feel like I at a loss for words, even though I already talked too much. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm just like, why would you say that? Because now you know, especially with a guy and their bruised egos. I'm sorry, fellas, but when y'all have a bruised ego, y'all want to come at somebody ten times harder than they came at you, and then we're gonna see that next week. So we're gonna move on. McKinley and Dominique, they walk to uh have dinner dominique stumbling over her heels over cobblestone okay but mckinley held her up they sit down to eat dinner and mckinley jokes that you know he did the candles he did the food he caught the lobster and made the food and dominique's looking kind of annoyed but listen this your mama's fault because she put you on the show anyway so they talk about you know, him eventually going sailing with her and doing fishing. She's like, am I going to have to set the fishing rod thing up for you? So he said, oh, maybe we'll see when we get to that point. And he apologizes for goofing around too much. And that's it to take from that. There was nothing else to take from their little conversation from their dinner. We then move on to Nicole and Chris. They have dinner. And Chris loves her dress. And I'm like, Chris, you and I both feel the same way because I saw... Nicole's dress. I'm like, Nicole, this dress is gorgeous. Nicole, this dress is gorgeous. Okay, I see you. 
this, this, this is immaculate. This is great. This is nice. Her dress was really nice. But, you know, they sit down to talk. So far, they call each other their dream spouse so far. Can we say, can we wait for eight weeks to talk about you're my dream wife or dream husband? Because four days in, we shouldn't even be talking about so far, you're my dream. No, no. It's too early to be saying any hypothetical, you're my, no. So then we get into Nicole joking and asking if he's in love with her yet. He says no, but he can see himself falling in love with her. So, you know, that was good enough for her to hear. Because even though she said she was a joke, I'm pretty sure she was really asking deep down if he really loved her. Because I'm pretty sure deep down she loves him, but she's just not going to say yet because she knows it's too soon. So then we move on to Chris asking about kids. So Nicole said, you know, all her life she never really wanted to have kids. But now she's at the point, you know, since she wants to get married and stuff, she's not opposed to having kids. But she don't see that anytime soon. Or is not crazy about having kids because she's career focused right now. So all that spiel that she did to try to say that, you know, she may or may, she kind of 50-50 on the fence about it, leads me to say it's enough. Chris, I hope you took all that she done said and just know, no, she don't want to have kids. Because a, not even a woman, I feel like people know if they want to have kids or not. Yes, I granted some people really do be 50-50 about it. But for the most part, I feel like you're leaning either one way or, or the other. For Nicole's sake, that was a very calculated answer. She don't want no kids. Okay, Chris, let, let me break it down for you, Chris. Okay? You, you listening? You ready? You sitting down? She don't want no kids. Okay, that's, that's, that's all I heard. I don't want no kids. I will force myself to maybe bear one child so he can shut up. But I don't want no kids. Ideally, I don't want no kids. Talking about career and all that stuff. She don't want no kids. Chris, on the other hand, he wants kids. Because he always dreamed about having two kids, a boy and a girl. So, of course, that's telling me you want some kids. But she don't want no kids. So, he don't really... You know, he kind of beats around the bush, kind of like, you know, when we get to that bridge, we'll get to it. But, you know, obviously not right now. You know, we'll wait one or two years before we have that conversation unless, you know, you get baby fever. So that means to tell me, Chris, you want kids. And if she were to say, let's have babies right now, you would be all for it. You would be down for it. So you already know from that it's not going to work. I'm like, of course, everything seems to be going nice, easy breezy, lemon squeezy. But here we go with one of the fundamental things of if a relationship will work or not is one person wants to have kids, the other person don't want to have kids. Those are usually deal breakers in marriages. So, of course, for the TV purpose, for the sake of drama, for the producers, we got to get someone who wants kids, who don't want kids, put them together in a marriage and see if it works. Knowing good, well, and hell. 98.9% of the time, it don't work out. So I'm like, of course there was going to be something. I knew there was going to be something. So whether one person goes what the other person wants, it ain't going to work out. I, I had hope, guys. I, I did, but it ain't going to work out, man. I, I, it ain't going to work out, but we're going to move on from that. We get to McKinley and Dominique. They go swimming at night. And McKinley talking about how Dominique's boobs being awesome. They're screaming at him. I'm like, okay, McKinley, I just, we get it. Okay, you like her boobs. We get it enough. Okay, suck on them at that already. Like, ask her if you can touch him. We get it. You love her boobs. You might just be horny right now and a little drunk. Who knows? But we get it, McKinley. Dominique looking like, the whole time they was in the pool, she looking like, I really don't want to be here right now, but I'm just going to tolerate it, you know, because my husband, this is what my mom really wants for me. But she looking like she'd rather be with her homegirls back in Nashville, just going to the club. So they're talking, I guess he's trying to flirt, touching up on, on her, you know, trying to kiss on her neck and hug on her and stuff. And she's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But, you know, screaming internally inside, like, I just want to go home. So I'm just like, okay, I'm like, if Dominique lets some, he definitely going to get it in tonight with her. You know, she might just give him, you know, charity puss because of the fact that technically he's her husband now. But I don't feel like she would want to, you know, do it. If he didn't 
seemed like he was trying to push it, you know, like, let's, come on, you know, babe, you know, they give the little back rub that guys always do when they're trying to do. I feel like Dominic would be fine with not having sex. With him, at least. So, there's that. I mean, we'll find out later if they did it or not, but, I mean, he's definitely looking like he's, he's ready to get it in tonight. We then move on to Shaquille and Kirsten. They're having dinner, and they tell each other that they look good, and they talk. And I guess Kristen, Kirsten, not Kristen, Kirsten makes mention that uh, Shaquille seems like he talks at her, not to her. And I guess Shaquille's excuses, he just tries to be perfect for her because, you know, she beautiful. So he ain't trying to mess nothing up. You know, he don't say that. I'm just paraphrasing what he's trying to get at. So Kristen's like, he don't got to try to pretend to be perfect for her. And she makes a toast for them to not be perfect. Okay, but he's going to still try to stay on your good side at all times, Kristen, because at the end of the day, he knows he bagged a 10 out of 10, a winner, a baddie, and he don't want to lose it because he know he's probably not going to get no one as beautiful as Kristen. Not saying he can't get one. I'm just saying Kristen's probably the best looking woman he's ever gotten. I'm just saying because she is gorgeous. So we'll see how that goes. And then... Lastly, we get to day five of marriage and Jasmine and Eris, they're playing Frisbee. Then they stand to talk and come to find out Eris has never been in love. So that makes Jasmine a little nervous because she's just like, okay, well, since you've never been in love, how am I supposed to know what's going to happen in eight weeks? If you've been in a relationship for like a year and a half and you don't know whether you love somebody, what does that mean for us in our marriage? Because, you know... When the eight weeks come, are you going to need to be in love in order to say yes on decision day? So he's just like, I don't know. So that makes Jasmine a little nervous, apprehensive, and concerned. Understandably so, Jasmine. And that should let you know it's probably not going to work. Because usually when people be like, oh, yeah, you know, I've never been in love. Eight to nine times out of ten, they say no on decision day or it never works out. So, uh Unfortunately, Jasmine is still a 50-50 for you. It's really 50-50 for all these couples, but at the same time, just going on the credibility of Married at First Sight lifetime is more than likely higher percentage chance that this girl, the marriage is not going to work out. Okay? That's where the episode ends. Literally, that's where the episode ends. Um, The only thing I want to make mention for next week, for next episode is, you know, I feel like all the females and Gina going to be upset with homeboy Clint because he's telling everybody that, you know, he's used to more attracted to slender women. And, you know, Gina's just not that slender for him because he's probably with, used to the petite girls and all that stuff. So all the girls going to feel some type of way. Gina's going to try to, you know, tell him about himself and she's going to walk away. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, walk away. But at the same time, I granted, probably wasn't the best for you to be saying that in front of everybody, Clint. But at the same time, Gina, you already started what you're not attracted to him. And you're talking about redheads. So, I, I mean, you're not attracted to him. You're not attracted to you. But I feel like if you never said that, then y'all probably wouldn't be in that predicament that y'all about to be in next week either anyway that was the end of the episode <laughs> there's nothing else to say there's just that's it so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you laughed at least once please subscribe if you didn't laugh come back next week i'm gonna try to make you laugh next week and other than that if you have any comments on this episode please let me know in the comments so let's discuss so i have somebody else to talk to with married at first sight other than my husband because you know he he don't really watch like that and other than that be easy be so let me squeezy i'll see you guys in the next one